Hey guys, welcome back to yet another Tech Tip Tuesday, the first one of 2022, and I promise to bring you many more. The end of last year got a little bit busy, but we're back nonetheless, and we're here today to talk about kill switches and wiring them in with alternators so that your system works properly. So there's three main components, obviously, in a kill switch situation with an alternator. Uh, you have your alternator, most of them are built very standard. I'll show you a couple of the differences. Um, battery and then the kill switch. So one of the main things is to be NHRA, IHRA legal and just safe in general is when you kill the kill switch, if the car is already running, it needs to kill everything. Well, if you have the alternator power, uh, charge power running back into the system somewhere, that's gonna keep the car running. I mean, you can run a car off an alternator after you jump start it. It's uh, no secret and it's no surprise. So wiring this in is of the utmost importance. I've seen a car um, crash and uh, the kill switch wasn't um, activated. So the guy is sitting there, the car is on fire, he's unconscious and the fuel pump is just pumping fuel. Uh, thankfully that guy had things wired correctly. They were able to come up, knock off the kill switch and everything went away. Um, had that kill switch not been wired properly, uh, it might have still kept pumping fuel and it could have caused an explosion, a bigger fire. They wouldn't have been able, been able to get the guy out of the car safely. Um, and this situation can be replicated over and over and over with an improperly wired kill switch. They're there for a reason and they're there for your safety as well as the track officials and the guy next to you and everything else in between. On your standard alternator, there's two types of alternators. There's a factory style, uh, like fuel injection style alternator where it has excite wires and everything that trigger. And uh, there's also one wire alternators. Regardless of what style you run, whether you have an external plug plus the charge wire or not, this is gonna affect and be the exact same concept. So your charge post right here is essentially when your alternator is spinning, it's charging your battery you know, you're wiring from the factory, everything usually comes into a main block in the power system right here. Um, and the problem is everything is connected between them. So if your alternator comes in and also your main power for your car comes in, you're essentially going to have it cross over. So once basically everything's excited, and if this is the same power cable that goes all the way back up front, that's a problem. So having your alternator go directly from this lug right into your power lug is fine. However, everything else that powers the rest of your car needs to come directly off the switch. So the correct way to wire in a kill switch is you're gonna to have to take everything else that powers the entire rest of the car off of the power lug on your battery. And you're gonna to have to basically have your alternator charge wire come directly to your battery. And then you're going to have your power cable that goes from your battery to your kill switch be the only other uh, power wire that comes off of your battery. The only caveat to that is that on EFI systems, a lot of times you want to run your power and ground directly to the battery. So your EFI system for your car, meaning your main power and ground can go directly to the battery, but your trigger wire, your ignition system wiring, everything else needs to come directly off of this. So you're gonna have your power wire come directly from your alternator to here. You're gonna have your EFI power and ground go right to the battery. But from there, you're gonna have a, your main cable go from the battery to your kill switch, and then from your kill switch to the rest of everything else. And that means your ignition system, uh, your fuel pumps, your anything else that's gonna basically demand power from your vehicle, your body control, everything. So essentially, the power and ground there going to your EFI system are only supplying it, but they're not switching it. Your ignition system is going to be powered off of this so that when you kill this, it's basically interrupting the alternator from the rest of the vehicle and your ignition system from the rest of the vehicle. The other benefit, added benefit of adding and wiring your alternator directly to your um, battery and not to the kill switch is the fact that your battery actually acts as a noise filter. So uh, alternator is a very noisy source of energy as well as anything with motors. Um, and that's essentially why your EFI system goes right back to your battery and nowhere else because it's trying to not introduce noise. I have a whole, whole other video about that. I'll actually post that in the description below so we don't want to get off into the weeds. But what you need to know is that your alternator is only charging your battery. Your alternator is not to feed back into the rest of the system. So 
once you understand that you're going alternator right to your battery and then everything else from the kill switch to power the car minus the EFI system, you know that you now have a correctly interrupted system that will operate properly and when you kill it, it's going to uh, kill the whole system. So that's going to kill fuel pumps, water pumps, uh, external oil pumps, your ignition, spark, everything else. So it's truly separated at that point. If my video didn't make sense, I'm going to add this schematic in here. Um, I'll also put the link for the schematic down in the description below, and this will simplify it and make sense to you guys. Um, sometimes you're picture people and not words people. So check that out as well. So I hope that makes sense to you. If you're wiring from scratch, power right from your power stud right to your battery stud, EFI system, your power and ground from your EFI system right here. From there, everything else is gonna be powered from the power terminal to your in and your out on your kill switch. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Just remember, don't loop your alternator back in with everything else that powers your car. It'll keep running, it's improper. You'll never get your kill switch to work properly. There are some kill switches on the market that have a breakout for an alternator, but most don't. So if you're doing it, this is how it needs to be done. If you have ideas for the next Tech Tip Tuesday, please drop them down in the comments below. That's how we get ideas at Motion Raceworks for Tech Tip Tuesdays. That's where this idea came from. We had an overwhelming request of people asking how we should properly wire an alternator with a kill switch. So here we are. We'll see you guys next time. I hope you have a great 2022 and we'll see you later.